Hello, listeners, and welcome to another edition of uh, Turf Talk. I'm your stylist, Michael Kane, and I'm going to take you through a preview of the upcoming Nine Race Car that's going to be on show on Saturday, the 5th of November, 2022. And please note, they'll be racing on Sunday as well, nine races on tap for you on Sunday. So it's going to be an 18 race, two day weekend carnival of uh, great Thorbe racing from Cayman as Park. On Saturday, the 5th of November, the feature is going to be uh, the eighth event that's going to be for Thrill and Up and Over the Lounge Contest, a field of nine. They'll be going 1,000 meters around the first 1.14 million. And the trophy race of the day is going to be race number nine, the Betmakers Trophy, with a field of 13. Set a go distance of 1,300 meters of six and a half furlongs. The first year is 1 million and 20,000. First post is at 12 noon. Nine races on tap. Catch time begins in race one, and so does the regular six. The catch time jackpot stands at over 1.8 million. And the regular six minimum guaranteed payout is 2 million. And the regular six jackpot stands at over one point. Make that uh, over two million. Is it the Rega Six? Well, I've seen the Rega Six uh, jackpot on the program here. Here it comes. Minimum guarantee payout is two million. I'll update you on the Rega Six jackpot momentarily. Race number one is twenty two two euros. It's a maiden special rate event. We have a field of eight. They'll be going one thousand one hundred meters. The price is one million and ten thousand. And these are two euros. A maiden special weight event. The best four for me includes one whiskey, two. Show me the butcher. Six, she's my hedge fund, and seven, book delicious. One, two, six, and seven. That's going to go in the opening contest. And number seven, book delicious will be all the rage. Uh, this one, a highly thought of debutant. She's a two-year-old bay filly by Key to Power out of the Bellamy Road mare. Keep the faith. Brett Carm Passard owned E.S. Campbell, A.J. Cools Artig, and K. Passard owned uh, those, by those uh, persons and a trade by Ian Passard. Ray and Lewis will be in the saddle. Ray and Lewis, of course, teamed up with Ian Passard recently to win the Gold Cup with Mahogany. Bootylicious will have tongue tie and lay six for the debut. Has worked well on the 30th of October, five and a half for in 1072 by 101 flat. And on the 9th of October, went 1013 beating Brinks at exercise Brinks did 1024. And on the 29th of uh, September, this one went 47 flat for the first four four downs. Beating the Citadel, who did 47 2, and that was um, out the gate, an eight and eight four long uh, gallop. So this Bootylicious looks to be a very very advanced start and should take some beating here the ones we have seen already headed by number one whiskey he's a race uh, five times two seconds and one third so he's uh, getting uh, closer and closer to winning and uh, was well beaten on that by Duracell prior to that was uh, beaten by awesome Anthony so look for whiskey to use his experience uh, to his benefit here Robert Hardball Halley the rides for leading trainer Jason Acosta and owner Von White Number two is Show Me the Butcher, a debutant, a two year old bay filled by Nuclear Weight out of the He's a Real Thing May Asia's Dream, bred and owned all of the great trained by Patrick Fong and Paul Francis has the leg up. Show Me the Butcher has looked quite uh, fluent in the mornings, went uh, 36 2 all the way back in August. So she's working fairly well and has to be kept on the right side for those trifectors and superfectors. And number six is She's My Hedge Fund. Dane Dawkins picks up him out here for leading trainer Jason Acosta. So a new dynamic uh, to the uh, championships here. With Dane Dawkins, the leading rider, now taking the call uh, from Jason DaCosta. And uh, we look forward to this combination having a couple of wins before the season is over. First time Lasix, so she's my head front. She has raced twice already, ridden on both occasions by Omar Simpson. Now has least raced a medication Lasix to be administered for the first time. And Dane Dawkins, the leading rider, picks up the mount here. Look for she's my head front to run her best race yet. I'm going to make it 7 1 2 and 6. Hard to deny, number 7. Book delicious based on exercise reports. For second, make it number one. The experience whisk it for third, make it number two. Show me the butcher for fourth, number six. She's my hedge fund. Dr. Paul Light and the trader Ryan Darby, they agree with me with Book delicious. Race number two is next, and here's where we have Native Breath Three Olds. It's a maiden condition race for Phillies only. Early pick four starts here, and so does the place part eight. And we have a field of seven at a distance of five and a half for rounds. Phillies only. The purse is 900 and 90,000. My best four includes one Cotterwood Cathy. Two, oh so long. Six, Zion's Princess. And seven, Babylon will fall. One, two, six, seven. That's where we're going in race number two. Number one, Cotterwood Cathy. Mr. Breakout last and made up a lot of ground. Uh, finished second by some semblance there behind uh, Martin Shoot. Has uncovered her well being somewhat. And Cotterwood Cathy is on the upgrade. Worked around on the 30th of October. Six for in 117.4. Onid Mullins picks up the mount here for Trader and Abbey. And owner Nadon. Look for Cotterwood Cathy from a better break from those starting gates to be in the thick of things where it matters most. Number two, oh so long. Aptly named, takes oh so long to get going. And with the trip being five and a half furlongs, I'm expecting oh so long 
to be running on in deep stretch. But by that time, the race might very well be over. Under your Paul picks up the mount here for Trader Gear Sabati and Under Breeder New Limited. Number six is Zion's Princess. I like the way this one shapes up in this lineup. I was fifth by six and a half in Sundance behind Rambling Rose. No, that's not a lady and traditional lady. That was over five furlongs round. Showed good pace after being slow in the stride. And this Zion's Princess went very close to winning on the 4th of June. Went second by just a short head to Alexa's Secret. That was over this trip of five and a half furlongs. And uh, next in town, we're third by four lengths behind Mini Duak and Love Dub. Love Dub came back to win since. And uh, Mini Duak has also come back to run some good races in the class above nuns of two. So Zion's Princess, on the strength of that 4th of June effort, is going to be my top choice here. Roger Leho, recalled to ride by owner, trainer, breeder, Michael Beecham. Number seven is Babylon Winford. This one, 30th of October, was uh, very roguish at the starting gates and uh, injured herself. Back here now, a week later, and uh, Babylon Winford has the record of being a non-starter on several occasions. I think if my records are right, Babylon Winford has been a scratch at least four times in her career. She has raced four times. She has been second once, third once, fourth once. So a lot will have to come together for Babylon will fall to be focused and go into starting gates without any problem and come out of the starting gates in good order. Once all those things happen, Babylon will fall. Definitely will have a great chance. And I was going to make this one my top choice, but I said to myself, Babylon will fall does everything wrong. And uh, uh, I'm not going to take a chance here making this man my top choice. But clearly, Babylon will fall can win if this one is focused on the task at hand. I'm taking number six, Zion's Princess, just to get the better of number seven, Babylon will fall, then one cutter with Kathy, and two, oh so long. So it's going to be Zion over Babylon in race number two. In this event, the Dr. Paul agrees to meet Zion's Princess, and Ryan Darby six with his charge, number one, cutter with Kathy. Race number three is next. Here's where to start the early pick five. It's mandatory payout in the early pick five. Please note, mandatory payout in the early pick five, and that Jackpot stands at over 921,000 automatically, automatically converted to a carryover of 921,000 plus. So, all to be paid out in the early pick five, races three through seven. My best four for the third, two, three, four, and seven. Real big man, salute, give me the light, and call the emperor. Two, three, four, and seven. That's where we're going in the third event. It's a maiden three-old event. Number two, real big man, second by length, on dance behind Anchorman, that was over eight furlongs, cuts back in distance now to six and a half furlongs. Should not have a problem with the trip. Robert Hardball Halladine has been called to ride by Roy Matthew for DSTL and Associates. Real big man. Has a lot of scope to improve, has only raced twice. So look for a real big man to be the big man in race number three. Number seven is called the Emperor. Second and last behind Whiskey, that was over seven furlongs. Led for the first five furlongs. It was a like very game second too. And we look for the call the Emperor to run a big race once again. It was just a short in front of Joe. And Joe came back to win since. So, call the Emperor with Jawani Forbes, a.k.a. Allen, must be given a word of respect here. Number three, Saddle, should be on the premises as well. Paul Francis, a trader Ryan Darby. And number four is Giving the Light. Nicholas Seabot rides for Gary Griffiths. And I see Giving the Light on the program for Sunday. So, can Giving the Light run on Saturday and Sunday? Well, clearly, if Giving the Light wins on Saturday, he won't be eligible to run on Sunday because he will be not eligible to race against Maidens on Sunday. But that's going to be a very big if here. Given the light, you'll keep on the right side. Make it 2743 in race 3. And that's real big man to get the better of Call the Emperor. Then give me the light and salute. Trainer Ryan Darby agrees with me with real big man. And Dr. Paul Light, he goes to number 4. Give me the light. Race number 4 is next. Here's where we'll start the Twilight 6. Minimum guarantee pair is 2 million. And the Twilight 6 sequence races 4 through 9. As we'll be having 3 overlapping races on the Rega 6. And... The Twilight 6 races 4, 5, and 6. Race 4 is when it's bred 4s and up nouns of 3. And in Portis, 4s and up nouns of 2. It's a restricted allowance 4. A feel of 7. Declared to face the starter over a mile. 3, 4, 5, and 7. That's my best 4. Silver Fox, my partner horse. <laughs> Keep on trying apart every week, every month. I, win, I wonder when my draw is going to come. I hope it's this week with Silver Fox. Andre Powell picks up the mount here for Gary Sobrati. And Silver Fox has little to complain about here. And I'm going to work at this one again this week. Hoping it we will be partner draw week. Number four is Throne of the Light. Should be prominent as well. Number five, right in flight. One on uh, two starts back at the nuns of two level. And stepped up to nuns of three. Firmly planted in fifth place by 16 lengths behind Kyle Alexis. 
who for right in flight to go well here at 8 furlongs at number 7 Charming Beauty Dane Dawkins notably picks up the mount here he was on Silver Fox the last two times he's now opted for Charming Beauty and Charming Beauty has good pace and at a mile Charming Beauty will definitely make her presence well felt Silver Fox number 3 for me to get the better of number 7 Charming Beauty then 5 right in flight and 4 turn on the light Dr. Paul Light agrees with me with Silver Fox Trainer Rand Davis secret his charm number 1 the good life Race number five is next, and we have a field of nine. This is for the claiming level 550,000 down to 450,000. Native Wear 500 up numbers of four, and Importees 500 up numbers of three. Also invited today, part without a claiming tag. Late pick five starts here in race number five. A field of nine declared to go postwards. But just before I get into my best four for the fifth, we're going to take our mid program break. Uh, to the program, you're still Michael Kane taking through the preview of the upcoming nine race card that's going to be on show on Saturday, the 5th of November. And it's going to be the Bet Makers Trophy that's going to be race number nine, the trophy race of the day. And we'll be having the three of them up open and allowance contest race number eight, the penultimate $1.14 million in the purse money. The red race number five, and here's where we start the late pick five. And remember, it's mandatory payout in the early pick five, which begins in race number three. Race five, my best four includes three Zabertone, five Angela, seven. Nana's Bushman and 8, Burning Red. 3, 5, 7, and 8. That's where I'm going in race number 5. Number 5 is Angelos, claimed for 750000 on the 1st of October. And is down now to 550000 200000 less. Robert Hardball Halloween rides for Jason Acosta. They teamed up in Ohio at Thistledown. They also uh, had uh, uh, several wins there. Uh, so they have wins locally as well. So it's definitely a good combination here. Robert Hardball Halloween for Jason Acosta. The leading trainer and he's uh some seven million plus in front of defending champion trader Anthony Nunes. And we are in the first week of racing for November. Angelos well pointed down here and it looks to be uh, something of a good thing here in race number five. Another horse that steps down in class is number eight, Burning Red. Jabar Jackson rides for trainer Ryan Darby. Now, Burning Red uh raced in the St. Ledger, was uh, way down the track, I've been prominent up to the half mile. Uh, stepped in among 750 claimers on the 1st of August was served by 5 and 3 quarter lengths to Baton Rouge and Special Counsel and subsequent to that has 2 poor runs 7 by 10 and 3 quarter lengths to Stalas over 5 straight and over 7 furlongs 11 by 23 lengths and uh, those 3 ones came at 750 level now down to 550,000 Jamar Jackson aka Bag Juice asked the ride I see no reason why Burning Red shouldn't be given a glorious chance of winning at this event and number three is Zabertobe. This one was claimed on the 9th of July when second by five and a half lengths, a silent cat, intended to have raced on the 3rd of September, scratched, injured, and is back here now. Six-time champ Omar Walker right in the suites and champion owner Carlton Watson of Cats Manufacturing fame, of Calstomy to catch up fame. He's a champion owner. Look for Zabertobe as I'll be giving a very, very brief effort here. Number seven is Dallas Bushman. Change stables claimed on last for 550000 brought back an identical tag. The beat to have rides uh, for Junior Small, a.k.a. Pranga, also known as British and owner Barrington Bernard, Nalas Bushman. Takes a little while to get going most times, but I showed good pace the last two outings. The trip, though, reduces seven furlongs, and that should see Nalas Bushman gaining a lot of ground, but gaining late. Make it 5837 in race five, and that's Angelos to get the better of Burning where they're both down in class, then number three, Zabertone, and number seven, Nalas Bushman. Dr. Paulette and trainer Rand Abbey, they agree with me with Angelos. Race number six is next. We have a field of 10. They'll be going 1,000 meters straight. 250 claimers. Late before starts here. Minimum guarantee pair 250,000. My best four for race six. Five, six, seven, and eight. Blue Attitude, Papa Albert, Slice the Loon, and Stanislaus. Five, six, seven, eight. That's where I'm going in race number six. Number eight is Stanislaus. And this one has won two of the last three races. Both wins came at the 250,000 level. So I think it's safe to say that Stanislaus has proven himself to be better than the average 250,000 claimer claimed by Dale Murphy on the 8th of October when winning stepped up to 550 next in town and uh, was read by Chad Forbes that day down the track 16 lengths behind Balazzo but steps down now back to the 250 level and Dale Murphy has been doing a very good job with his small string and horses uh, raced uh, 61 horses so far this year 11 wins 7 seconds and 7 thirds and he's of course of runaway Algo fame so this Stanislaus, I'm expecting to prove to be a tough nut to crack. Number six is Papa Alberto, second by Stanislaus on last. That was at four furlong straight. Uh, was gaining late. 
claim from that event by trainer Mandy Anderson for only here at Miller. Abigail Abel recently had a great weekend, won the last race with Miniature Man that was on Sunday and won the first race on Saturday with Ian Zaling. So Abigail, Abigail Abel riding very well now. Papa Albert should give her a good run and Blue Attitude always uh, gives an honest effort. Second by just ahead of Nasba and Acapella at 5th Street. Back over the straight course once again and leading Ryder Day Dawkins. He's three in front of Anthony Thomas, the defending champion. Look for Blue Attitude to give the usual honest effort and slice salute number seven surprise with them last at the 250 not earned level now in among open 250 claimers slice saloon really turned on the form in no uncertain manner and uh let's see if this one can follow through with another encouraging run i'm gonna make it eight six five and seven my order of preference and that's stanislaus to get the better of papa albert blue attitude and slice saloon trainer Rand Darby he agrees with me with stanislaus dr paul i step is number one break in store Race number seven is next. The late triple begins here. Minimum guarantee paid is 400000 We have a field of eight. And this is for importies. Three and up, nuns of three. And native bird three and four years, nuns of four. It's a restricted six event. One, two, five, eight. That's my quartet of interest. The head corner store number one. Sunset silhouette number two. Tech apart number five. And the citadel number eight. Number one, the head corner store has shown marked improvement in his most recent races. One over a mile. The trip of this assignment that was on the 21st of August won by four lengths over on Ruli Dude and Real Boss. Subsequent to that, when stepping up to the grade above, was four by eight and a quarter lengths behind Brinks, Moromot, and Perfect Brew in the Winston Fargivitz OD Classic. And then finished second by two and a half lengths to Moromot over eight for dollars on the 17th of September. Then third to Perfect Brew and Sunset Silhouette over nine for dollars and 25 yards on the 8th of October. And then second and last behind Brinks over seven for dollars. So this one has, be, has been beaten twice in the last four outings by Brinks. No brings present here. Ryan Lewis riding for Gear Sabati and owner chief. The head cornerstone definitely is going to take some beating here. Number five is Tekapon, third and last by behind Brinks and the head cornerstone. So the head cornerstone beat this one by a length and a half. Tekapon back now over eight for long. Should go even better at eight for long trip. And with those two runs under his belt, the run in September and October, this Tekapon with Philip Partridge in the saddle for Jason Acosta is going to prove to be a very, very serious contender for top honors. And number eight, the Citadel. Came to the races with two wins from the first two starts, one by two and a quarter lengths on debut, beat Sunset Silhouette, then one by six and a half lengths over seven and a half furlongs, beating Peaky Blinders. So the both uh, both wins came very impressively. Six and a half furlongs at seven and a half furlongs. And I always tell my fans that average thoroughbreds don't win over trips such as six and a half furlongs on debut. So whenever you see a horse win over six and a half furlongs on debut, you know it's an above average thoroughbred. The leading rider, Dane Dawkins, picks up the mount here for training in Passard. The Citadel. Definitely worthy or worthy of serious consideration here. And number two, Sunset Silhouette. Jordan Barrett rides with Jason Acosta. So Jason Acosta has multiple entries here. Look for a very, very good finish in the seventh. I'm going to go 1582 as my order of preference. The head cornerstone to get the better of Tech Point, The Citadel and Sunset Silhouette. Dr. Paulette and Ryan Darby, they agree with me in race seven with the head cornerstone. Race number eight is the penultimate, and we have a field of nine. And this is the feature on the card. It's uh, for a purse of 1.14 million, and the late, great Chris, Christopher Armand uh, taught me that lesson that whichever race has the highest purse on the card, that is indeed the feature race. We have a feature race in race eight, 1.14 million in the purse, and the trophy race on the card is going to be race number 10, the Betmakers Trophy, 1 million and 20,000 in the Betmakers Trophy purse. So that's less than the purse for the eighth event. So based on the teaching of Christopher Armand, the feature race on the card is going to be race number eight. My best four includes five, God of Love, six, Laban, seven, Generational, and eight, Golden Wattle. Five, six, seven, eight. That's where we're going in race number eight. God of Love steps back down to overnight allowance coming up from coming uh, from uh, the level above, and that's open allowance. Has raced at open allowance since May. On the 28th of May, was second by four, then to Goddard at five straight in 58-2. On the 25th of June, over five and a half furlongs, third by a length to Duke and Double Diva. On the 1st of August, second by four and a half lengths to Mahogany. In 105 and a fifth for five and a half furlongs. So back down now to overnight allowance, 57 kilos and all. God of Love with Robert Hardball had it in in the saddle for trainer Fitzgerald Richards, aka Treddy. Should take some catch in here. Laman number six also steps down from open allowance. Now down to overnight allowance, they both will have 57 kilos. So they both will have to be on their top, top game 
if they're to get the better of the lighter horses. And I think that that's really the case. Uh, Laban trained by Hall of Fame trainer Richard Azan and uh, Anthony Thomas, a.k.a. St. Mary, the defending champion, has picked up the mount. Last time out, Laban was second behind Duke over a five round in 59 and 3 fifths of a second. Generational, this one has been at overnight level the last uh, five outings and hasn't won, but has been prominent and should be prominent once again. And Golden Water number eight, last year's champion, two year old, back to the closure at long last on the 16th of October in 58 3 for 5 straight, beating power and awesome rich. We'll have to do oceans better though at this overnight allowance level for the first time. Gotta go. 5687 in race number 8 and that's God of Love to get the better of Laban then Golden Wattle and Generational in this event Dr. Paulette and trainer Rand Abbey they agree with me with God of Love race number 9 is the Betmaker's Trophy a field of 13 at a distance of 1300 meters of 6.5 for rounds per year 1 million and 20 thousand my best 4 includes 1 1 like it 4 Nefertari 5 Freedom Street and 8 Stomp the Rhythm one, four, five, eight. That's what we're going to go in the Bet Makers Trophy. Number four is Nefertari. Third by two and three quarter lengths and last behind Monsieur Blue and Brompton Alex at five foot on straight. A trip which I suspect may be a trifle too short for Nefertari. Took no part prior to that on the 24th of September. A very negative tendency displayed there. And once that uh, has been corrected, which it clearly has, because this one came back and finished third at five foot on straight, now get six and a half foot on the trip which Nefertari won on debut after walking out of the starting gates. So from day one, Nefertari has shown that she can be problematic at the starting gates. Tevin Foster now picks up the mount once again for trainer Anthony Nunes. From a level break and a trouble-free run, Nefertari is expected to win. Number one is one like it. Ninth and last over six four runs behind a gift from Ben Prater that fourth over five run behind KP Choice, but was served by length and a half behind Elsie and GT Boy on the 11th of September over this trip of six and a half furlongs, a reproduction of that type of effort will see one like it being very prominent. And number five is Freedom Street, second at last over five furlongs straight behind Phoenix Prison, now gets a furlong and a half longer to travel and Shane Ellis picks up the more return to Patrick Lynch, look for Freedom Street to be forward replaced here. And despite the top rate of 56 kilos, Freedom Street has to be given a first rate chance of winning. And number eight is Stomp the Rhythm, this one just returning of a four month break and was served by five lengths. I realized and ranged over nine and 25 and last at the races in June. Blink is taken off by trainer Vincent Atkinson, Dane Dawkins, a notable choice of rider. He's appointed to ride. Stomp the Rhythm was very impressive in victory over this trip of six and a half rounds on the 27th of March, won by over 10 lengths, beating KP Charles and Devante. Did it in 121 too. So Stomp the Rhythm clearly has the capabilities of getting the better of this group at the nonce of two level. Gotta go. 4158 in the Betmakers Trophy, Nefertari over one like it, Freedom Street, and Stomp the Rhythm. Trainer and Abby agrees with me with Nefertari. Dr. Paulite's tip is number eight, Stomp the Rhythm, and Stomp the Rhythm is Dr. Paulite's cook food special. Haven't heard from Marshall from Purple Island as yet, but his tip should be coming in before first post, which is high noon. That's your program for you, Turf Talk. I'm your son, Alice Michael Kane, on behalf of our studio engineer, Oster Oit. Until it's time for live racing from Caymanus Park on Omega KLS Radio, the station of the stars. Goodbye for now.